The world around us is a confusing, mysterious one. And if it wasn't for the guidance of science attempting to unravel the strangeness, we would be much worse off. Throughout the centuries, science has allowed us to understand the strange beings all around us, probe some of the unimaginable depths of space, and even peer reliably into the future of our very own planet. Certainly, without the brilliant minds of science's best and brightest, many of the strangest parts of our world would have remained hidden and unsolved. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be diving into three recent scientific discoveries and discussing what they mean for our understanding of the world around us. NASA Engineers Puzzled by Voyager 1 Data Recently, veteran spacecraft Voyager 1 left scientists scratching their heads at the strange nature of some new readings. The spacecraft, which was launched over 40 years ago in 1977, has spent the decades journeying further and further from Earth, taking readings and measurements as it goes. Initially intended to simply study Jupiter and Saturn, successful discoveries on these planets led researchers to expand Voyager 1's mission, eventually entering interstellar space in a historic event in August of 2012. Interstellar space is the mysterious space between the stars, filled with a wealth of material cast off by fading stars over millions of years. The readings Voyager 1 gathers from such unique excursions provide valuable information about such a mysterious and little-studied aspect of the cosmos. However, recently, some of these readings have been giving scientists pause. It seems that the attitude, articulation and control system readings are nothing more than randomly generated telemetry as the data being collected appears to be generating impossible readouts. These readings are what keep Voyager 1's antenna pointing at our planet to enable communication, and the antenna has not strayed from its position oriented towards Earth. Additionally, the built-in fault protection systems which would detect system failures or other malfunctions have not been triggered. It seems that everything is in perfect working order, except for the fact that the readings appear to be impossible. Suzanne Dodd, a project manager for Voyager 1 with NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, spoke in a statement regarding the strange occurrence, saying that with regards to Voyager 1 and its counterpart Voyager 2, a mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. We're also in interstellar space, a high-radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. So there are some big challenges for the engineering team. But I think if there's a way to solve this issue with the AACS, our team will find it. As Voyager 1 is currently the furthest human-made object from Earth, flying through space at an astonishing 23.3 billion kilometers away, despite the seemingly impossibility of the readings, there is a chance that they are still meaningful and point to a mysterious phenomenon that we do not yet understand. Yet, after nearly five decades of constant exposure to high-powered cosmic radiation, it would surprise no one to discover that things have gone a little haywire and the valiant Voyager 1 might be showing its age at last. At the very least, researchers hope that this is nothing more than a minor malfunction, as the signal strength is not diminishing and the antenna is still functioning properly despite the impossible data. Searching diligently for the source of the problem, NASA scientists hope to locate and correct the problem and get Voyager 1 back into service as soon as possible. Equipped with three plutonium-fueled radioisotope thermoelectric generators that are expected to be able to power the probe until at least 2025, perhaps there are a few more years of life left in Voyager 1 after all. Physicists say humans could become true interplanetary species within 200 years. A new paper has been recently published which outlines a future that dystopian novel writers have been foreshadowing for decades. One in which we either figure out a way to harness safe renewable energy or life on planet Earth comes to a close in a horrifying end. The paper does offer a glimmer of hope in its startling proclamation stating that if we can manage to find a way to power our world with less harmful, more unlimited resources, 
it could open up a future wherein humans become a truly interplanetary species in under 200 years. The paper discussed the theories of Kardashev civilizations and great filters in the context of our own civilization and potential for great growth or destruction. Currently, we are well below the first type of Kardashev civilization, which is one that can use all of the energy available on the home planet in addition to the energy falling to the planet from its home star. But, as our energy consumption grows with every passing year, it seems that rather than approaching the efficiency of a Kardashev Type 1 civilization, we are only further endangering our planet with carbon and pollutants. Essentially, at the rate that we are going, humanity is our own great filter, which refers to the hypothesis that we have not found evidence of alien life forms because certain preset conditions prevent life forms and civilizations from advancing beyond a certain point. The paper spoke about the fine line which we as a species are currently walking. As we ramp up our energy production to come closer to type 1 status, the deadly effect we have on our planet similarly increases. One of the only viable futures to avoid self-destruction of the entire species seems to be expansion beyond our own planet to use the energy available on multiple planets to support life. This endeavor alone would require the use and implementation of multiple systems using hundreds of times the amount of energy our planet currently requires. In the paper, the authors discussed ways to reach the elusive and sustainable Type 1 status without bringing about the subsequent destruction of our entire planet and species as a result. The product was rather grim. If the planet does not make the switch from non-renewable sources such as fossil fuels to cleaner and renewable sources such as nuclear power, the biosphere of our planet will be too damaged to allow us to continue to make productive advances towards Type 1 status. This will leave us living in a world that cannot sustain life with the energy requirements that we have demanded of it. Finding ways to harness cleaner energy and handle any nuclear waste that may result could save humanity from the destruction that the paper described and allow us to not only continue to survive as residents of our own planet, but even grow beyond the bounds of Earth to become interplanetary species. And this change could come sooner rather than later. NASA Satellite Captures Shark Kano Eruption When it comes to erupting volcanoes spewing boiling hot lava throughout its immediate vicinity, most living creatures would be expending a large amount of energy to get as far away from the scene as soon as possible. However, it seems that some species of sharks do not really mind the extreme temperature environment created by these situations. Recently, NASA satellite images captured the aerial view of the slow eruption of an underwater volcano in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of the Solomon Islands, documenting the activity of the Kafachi volcano, otherwise known as Sharkano. The volcano, whose base sits at over 1,200 meters deep with a peak about 20 meters below sea level, constantly spews volcanic particles into the region even when it's not erupting generating a superheated, acidic environment that is incredibly unconducive to life. A 2015 study of the region found that two kinds of sharks, including hammerhead sharks, do not seem to mind the conditions at all and are so tolerant of the inhospitable environment that they have made their homes relatively close to the active crater, despite the occasional explosive burst of magma. They do not appear to be the only ones who can withstand the heat. An oceanography article published regarding the strange Sharkano stated that populations of gelatinous animals, small fish and sharks were observed inside the active crater, raising new questions about the ecology of active submarine volcanoes and the extreme environments in which large marine animals can exist. It has long been known that microorganisms and certain smaller life forms can tolerate conditions that are not conducive to life, but witnessing entire populations of such advanced life forms as sharks has provided researchers with a new perspective regarding how life might function in such seemingly hostile environments. The volcano itself has been in various stages of eruption since 1939 contributing to the creation of nearby islands that were subsequently eroded with the ocean waves. Even with much larger recent explosions in 2007 and 2014, 
The sharks do not seem to be deterred and have firmly established themselves as residents of the Pacific Ocean Sharkano. There is no doubt that researchers will continue to monitor and study the environment in order to attempt to better understand how and why sharks would live in the crater of an active volcano, as well as how they contribute to the ecological systems surrounding the underwater Kavachi volcano. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.